Hello and welcome to the TES Secondary Maths Resource of the Week number two for the 2016 to 2017 series with me Craig Barton. Now there's no getting away from it, at the end of this current academic year our year 11s will be sitting the brand new Maths GCSE. Now whilst nobody knows for certain what it's going to look like, one thing we do know is it's going to be more challenging. And it's not just going to be more challenging in the sense that there are new topics in there, it's also going to be more challenging in the way that current topics or current content is assessed. And one of my predictions is that um, topics are going to be combined in ways that we haven't perhaps seen before. Um, and this, I, I get this from, from looking at the sample assessment materials and speaking to some of the awarding bodies. So any kind of resource that um, enables my students to practice those combinations of topics is always going to go down well with me because the problem is, um, it's one thing knowing one topic and it's another thing knowing another topic, but if you can't put them together and, and apply the two different skills, students are going to uh, absolutely fall apart when it comes to this exam. So that's why I'm a huge fan of this series of resources and that is important to say that this is a series and whilst I'm just going to be looking at one of them uh, today there are a load of these by Andy Gillen and they are certainly worth downloading. So new GCSE problem solving this is problem one the wooden fence post. Um, and all it is, it's one question and one work solution, but the question combines, as uh, Andy's pointed out here, trig, surface area, circumference, ratio, and Pythagoras. And whilst you'd see things like this in, in the legacy uh, spec, you wouldn't, you wouldn't often see five topics combined together. It'd be more like one or two, but who knows how many they're going to go for in this new GCSE. So problems like this are great practice. Anyway, I'm whittling on too much here, so let's actually have a look at the problem itself. So here it is, wooden, wooden post problem. Uh, and there is the setup. You've got a hemisphere sat on the top, a cylinder here, and a cone. And here's the problem the angle of depression at the base of the cone is 34, perpendicular height of 30.5. The hemisphere at the top has a circumference of 0 0.063 meters. The ratio of the visible surface area to that of the cone uh, cylinder is 2 to 5. What's the surface area of the wooden fence post? Now, if your year 11s are anything like mine, and mine are pretty decent, if I gave them that, they wouldn't have a flipping clue where to start. And this is the important thing. Whilst we're perhaps not going to see a problem quite as complex as this, well, hopefully not on the actual exam itself, it's this idea of building up this grit, this determination, this ability to pull together different skills that's going to be so, so, so important. So, there's the problem. What on earth do we flip and do now when we've got kids saying, well, I don't know what to do, sir? Well, this is where, obviously, we need to make sure we're familiar with the problem ourselves. So thank uh, goodness that Andy has provided some lovely work solutions. And you can see here we've got basic trig involved. We've got units involved. We've got using the formula for surface areas of cones. We've got formulas uh, for hemispheres and surface areas of hemispheres. Then we've got ratio. We've got answers in terms of pi. We've got different units. We've got rounding involved all this kind of stuff. So I think we familiarize ourselves with the problem. Um, maybe we just give students it in this unstructured way. I think that's a decent way to start. I don't think there's any point hiding anything from them. Maybe we say, all right, you've got five minutes. See what you can make of it in five minutes. Um, and just no help, you know, because the, the students will want help straight away, but no help. Just say, look, five minutes, you're on your own. Work, work with your partner, work in a small group. What can you come back with? And then after five minutes, let's let's go to the board and let's see what we've got as a group. What do we think a valid first step is? What do we know? What can we label our diagram as? What 2D diagrams can we draw here? What topics do we think are involved? Let's just get a bit of information down. Let's make a start. And then once we've made that start, once we've collected our ideas together on the board, once we've agreed our next steps, let's have another five minutes. Off you go. Five more minutes. What, how far can you get this time? Then let's bring it back to the board. And so on. And it's just about building up students' confidence to take on these unstructured, multi-step, multi-topic uh, questions. And that'd be my way of approaching it. Um, another way that, I, that I've used in the past, and I've spoke about this, is my counter technique. And that's where I get students into groups and I give them each, each a counter or two counters and they can exchange that for a question or a hint at any stage through the activity. So maybe for this, I get the students in groups of four and I give each group of four one counter and I'd say, look, use this counter wisely. This is your only help you're getting from me this lesson. So use it wisely. And just that little gimmick, and it is a gimmick, but I found it really makes students talk to each other. And you, what you'll get is you'll get one student will put their hand up and another student in the group will be grabbing them and saying, no, no, ask me first before we spend our counter, ask me first, and so on. So I think little techniques like that are going to become more and more important when students are faced with problems such as this.
So as I say, this isn't just a one-off. This is part of a series of resources. And if you click, if you click on Andy's profile, or if you just have a kind of little float down here, you'll see the Pentagon. And I think there's another one yet. There you go, running track problem, all designed for this uh, for the new GCSE. So there you go. Give that a go with your students. And um, persevere would be my advice. They'll find it an absolute nightmare first time round. Then it'll be a painful lesson, but they'll get better and better and better at it. And then they'll be well prepared for the demands of what's coming in in May and June 2017. Hope that was useful. And I shall return with a fresh resource of the week next week. Take care and bye for now.